So I stand here, and I'm thinking a little bit about my favorite sports teams. So as a native Houstonian, it would be the Houston Astros, the Houston Texans, the Houston Rockets, Team Liquid, and Cloud9. Now, if you've never heard of Team Liquid or Cloud9, you're gonna hear about them soon. Esports is here. Due to increasing global awareness, more platforms online that are offering live stream events, increased revenue growth, and sponsorships. Something you might wanna know is that here in Texas, we're making a splash. But we're in an environment where Audi, T-Mobile, Nike, Drake, and The Weeknd, among others, are investing millions in these teams. And for those who don't know, I don't want to leave you behind, eSports is the sport of video gaming. Yes, it exists. Yes, we'll get to it. So recently, just for context, to you know, really understand how big this thing is, is that a single League of Legends competition brought, more, brought in more viewers than the Stanley Cup Finals, the NBA Finals, and the World Series combined. So why should you care? Why should I care? Why should we want to watch someone else play a video game that we're not playing? They're playing. It seems unbelievable, and some dismiss it, dismiss it as a niche pastime. Now, while esports may have started as a niche pastime, the term niche no longer applies. Now, I was apathetic myself. I was like, I don't really care. Until I realized that eSports is coming into my bill house. On a day-to-day -day basis, I'm in artificial intelligence. I deal in AI. An opportunity knocks with eSports and AI. AI improves players, it improves the game, and it improves business. You know, for marketers, eSports buys in a very, very, very lucrative target demographic. They're young. They're tech savvy, and they're willing to try new things. So investors, media, tech companies, brand sponsors, and venture capital firms alike are starting to see this trend, and they're catching on. Esports enthusiasts are a captive audience, and they can sell to these folks over and over again. There's a reason why tech companies are going after these teams. Fact, take Samsung White. Samsung White is a Korean-based League of Legends esports team that is sponsored by Samsung Electronics. So let's bring it home to Texas and to Houston, respectively. Here in Texas, esports generates a lot of money. And it's not just for those that are making these video games. Esports revenue is expected to top $1.5 billion this year. And in Texas, that means a great amount for state tax revenue, job creation, STEM careers, and bringing talent here. And here in this city, the fourth largest city in America, the University of St. Thomas, the University of Houston, and the University of Houston downtown are homes to official academic esports programs. Esports is changing the game with AI, pun intended. Refining player talent in a way that traditional sports, to be quite honest, hasn't even seen yet. It changes players, it changes teams, it changes businesses, and then, although you might not know this, it actually changes how we collect data. Traditionally, gamers are self-taught. For example, I would buy a video game, I would play it over and over and over again until I memorized every out, every opponent, and every possible win. Now shift gears and think of a boxer. A boxer invites an opponent to the ring that is the same size and the same weight. And when they spar in the ring, she develops her skill set and builds muscle memory. So in esports, AI is the partner. AI enhances humans while humans enhance the spot. New training yields better performing player athletes and better bots. So AI is huge for pro players and for amateurs alike, really. As tournament prizes and viewership grow year after year after year, the industry attracts lucrative sponsorships at an increasing rate, and new players enter the ring every single day. So how does one gain a competitive edge? How does one gain just that little something to get across the finish line? Now here's a tip. Whenever you go to your dinner parties, here's something you can share. The best of the best of the best of the best 
in esports are coming out of Korea, which maybe you might have known. But this is the sociology of esports. Korea is a fairly small country and definitely way smaller than the United States. And a lot of the major metropolitan uh, regions of Korea, they have 5G. And here in America, 5G is slowly rolling out. But if you know anything about video games, whether you're playing OG Snake on your Nokia brick or your Candy Crush, time is everything. So if you lag or you have a hiccup, you're gone. So think about the advantage that a Korean uh, esports player has over someone in Boise, Idaho, when they're playing in 5G and they don't have lag. So how does one defeat a cunning and fast opponent? Athletes turn to AI as their secret weapon. High-performing players who win cash prizes in the millions can afford AI software because they simply write it off as a business expense. And esports analytic platforms like AI and AimLab provide coaching to assess player stats and suggest something better. Well, what is this slide? Let's go from the abstract to the concrete. This is a slide of what a player would see after he finishes playing his game that like, is backed by AI software. So he plays, for example, a first-person shooter game with AI running in the background. And while AI, while AI is running in the background, it's recording every move, every piece of data, and everything that's needed to make a good suggestion. So what this says is that on a one to 100 scale, think about grade school, these are the metrics associated with that player. And Ali obviously is not doing too well. <laughs> so poor tracking indicates that she's not tracking her opponent well enough. Too slow, not moving fast enough. Slow hand means she's not changing weapons fast enough. And then left hand side means that her attention is uneven. Paying too much attention to the right hand side, not enough attention to the left hand side. So after a player sees this, she absorbs the information, starts the game all over again, and this happens ad nauseum. Elite gamers, backed by global brands, adopt AI to gain the tactical edge. So, you know, as a you know, second business case, Counter-Strike, which is a first-person shooter game, multiple players play at the same time. And on these platforms, an AI coach can teach the players like favorable positions. So it'd be something like uh, hiding behind a building, or like crouching near a bridge, or a podium, something like that. I prefer the podium. <laughs> so, you know, with these suggestions that come with this, the person can survive a counterattack. But there's good news for the rest of us, you know, for the, us who aren't the tip of the, the cream of the crop. It's not just for elites anymore. Amateurs can purchase monthly subscriptions, kind of like the Netflix model, and they can gain access to constantly updated AI software. And they can play among the best of the best. One thing to note, outside of the player athlete, is that biz, big business means big data. AI impacts businesses and data collection. Computer researchers design machine learning systems that solve real world problems and use video games because video games are simply proxies for overcoming technical challenges. AI trains the human and the human trains the bot. And this is an infinite loop that goes over and over and over again. And both get better at the same time. So given this loop, what do we do with all this data? Gaming helps developers optimize machine learning. And an example of that would be self-driving cars. A computer, just like in eSports, needs to detect objects and anticipate how others will behave. And AI represents a lot of money for these training firms. eSports analytics platforms like Omnicoach rely solely on AI-powered insights for their bread and butter. Now, whereas traditional sports may not be able to capture a lot of the uh, player data, the digital nature of eSports makes information go further. So there's no shortage of information in eSports. So cutting edge fields like machine learning exist for multiple reasons. One, to open more avenues to help players win. Two, to help firms understand how to align their businesses. And three, to regulate the competition itself. So why is esports here? This is the refrain. Why would anyone want to watch 
someone else play a video game that they're not even playing? The answer is very simple. It's for the reasons that you and I watch traditional sports. For the same reason I watch basketball, for the same reason she watches golf, so on and so forth. And if you're not interested in what's going on in the virtual battlefield, I would highly suggest that you pay attention to the market. This is a $1.1 billion market and it's only growing. This market is ripe for opportunity with esports. Here is a very happy and smiling Kyle Giesterdorf. <laughs> in one night, uh, well, first of all, uh, Kyle is a recent Fortnite champ who took home $3 million in one tournament, which I kind of want to rethink my career right now. But, um, <laughs> so this means that his one tournament prize he won more than Tiger Woods ever won for a single green jacket. Let that sink in. The market opportunity for AI in sports, esports, is booming. As AI gains ground and players like Kyle get better, and the popularity of esports increases, I can really only imagine that the prizes will get bigger and bigger and bigger, especially if you are backed by. Samsung, Audi, T-Mobile, Drake, and <coughs> Drake's posse. Mark Cuban, in an interview with Fox Sports, once said, I love eSports. It's like playing five-dimensional chess against the world. It's a real sport, and people are really tuning in. AI-trained players will make eSports a slam dunk. It'll invite more marketers into the arena, with a very much expanding fan base. AI and esports will help brands and players meet innovation. I, for one, am super excited. Game on. <laughs>